I'm going to make an animation of these letters jumping up into the screen uh, with a little bit of a bounce and jiggle and settling into place. Now what I often do with my animations is I start at the end of the animation. I often know what I want it to look like at the end. So what I'm going to do for a start is I'm going to compose my shot here. I'm going to set my text up where I want it to end up at the end of this animation. The other thing that's a really good idea to do is to create a camera. It's always a good idea to create a camera and animate to the camera. Uh, that gives you a little bit more structure and control about how your, your uh, animation is being designed. So I'm happy with this positioning of my text. My camera is a little bit lower. By positioning it a little bit lower, it makes this text look a little larger and uh, it looks um, uh, grander, has a, a larger sense of scale. If I was to position my camera above it and off to maybe one side, it looks like a little model off in the distance. I want this to look big and thick and heavy and grand. So simply by positioning a camera slightly lower and looking up at it, we get that impression that this is a big heavy block of something. So uh, that's just a really simple little bit of um, compositional camera um, uh, use I guess. Um, so now I'm happy with this this position that I've got on my screen here. I'm going to create a camera. So let's go create camera and I'm just going to use a basic camera and now if I tumble away from my scene there's my camera there and if I click on this little bracket next to the camera I can jump back into it and this is the view that my camera will see. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now that I've got my camera positioned, uh, I'm going to carry on and animate. Now one little trick with working in Cinema 4D, when you're in a camera and uh, you're working on your scene, it's really easy to forget that you're in the camera, and what you can end up doing is tumbling and spinning and shifting your view around as you work, and then you realize, of course, that you've messed up your camera position. So what we can do is we can put what's called a protection tag on this camera, and that just locks it in place so that I don't accidentally move it while I'm working. So the way that we do that is go to our Tags menu, and what we want to do in R21, they've changed how the tags are organized, and I'm just going to have a look through this tag here, and what I want to do is find the protection tag, which is under Rigging Tags. There it is there. So this protection tag, if we select it, it's locked the position, scale, and rotation of this camera. So if I hold down my uh, option and my mouse buttons and try and tumble around, I can't now. It's, it's not moving. If I jump out of the camera, now I can look around my scene. So that's a little trick there, protection tag. It just stops things from being moved. Uh, I use them a lot while I'm working. Okay, back to the MoGraph. So here's my Mo text. I want to use an effector. The effector is going to push my text around. It might scale or rotate it. Uh, and it's the thing that controls the animation movement. For my animation, I want this text to come upwards into the shot. So I'm going to make a plane effector. So MoGraph effectors plane. So the plane effector, if we look at its parameters, it can affect the position, scale, and rotation of any Mo objects, whether they are Mo text, MoGraph cloners, or anything else. It does a bunch of other stuff, but we're going to look at the position, scale, and rotation for now. Now, what I want to do on my Mo text is I want each individual letter to be affected by this plane effector. So if I select my Mo text and have a look through the tabs here, I've got a letters section. I want to click and drag my plane effector into the letters. Now what you will see there is my text has jumped up in the air. The reason for that is if I look at the plane effector, its position function is turned on and it's moving any Mo objects that are being affected by it upwards by 100 centimeters. And I can check that just by clicking and dragging on the values there. Yep, that's what it's doing. It's shifting them up. I actually want my text to come up from below. Uh, I want my, my plane effector will have pushed my text downwards. And then I'm going to use the field to turn that off. Um, we'll see that in a second. What I'm going to do is go back to my camera view. Now what I can do is I can adjust this value until my text is just below the limit of my, my frame that will be rendered. This slightly darker area around my interface, this will not be rendered. Only the lighter area, any objects within the lighter area will be rendered. Outside of it they won't be. So let's just push this down until my text is just below. It's actually just disappearing off the screen there. So that's my plane effector. It's pushing the text down and I can just check that by turning the plane effector on and off. If I jump out of my camera, there's my text being affected or not. So that's the plane effector set up. The next thing we're going to use is a field. 
and the field is a way of turning this plane effector on or off for each individual character. So let's see how that works. I'm going to select my plane effector, I'm going to come to the fall off tab, and what I want to create is what's called a linear field. This is a, a straight line uh, effector, sorry, a straight line field um, between the two ends of it. Um, these, whatever MoGraph objects are being affected by it, will either be fully affected or not at all, or somewhere in the middle. So let's see how that, see how that works. Um, there's my linear field. Okay, so what we've got, we can see this straight away. I've got these two rectangles in space, kind of look like a Star Wars TIE fighter. This is the linear field. Within these two rectangles, the MoGraph objects will go from being affected by the plane effector to not affected at all. And we can see this. If we grab, make sure we get your move tool selected, if we grab our field, slide it along this red x-axis, you can see as those rectangles pass through the letters, they are effectively turning on or off the plane effector. So that's pretty cool. That's working pretty well. Now I'm just changing the position of these at the moment. If you wanted to, you could go back to the plane effector and under its parameters tab, we could choose to scale this as well. I'm going to uniformly scale my letters and I'm going to make them smaller. So they're small down here and as they pop up, they grow in size. So I've got scale turned on, I've got uniform scale, so it scales evenly on all X, Y, Z, all three X, Y, Z axes. And now if I click and drag this value down, we can see the plane effector is shrinking these letters down. So again, if I grab this field and slide it from side to side, we should see these letters grow as they pop up into the shot. That looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing, now that all this is set up, now we've got our, our Mo object, uh, we've got our plane effector, and we've got our field. The next thing to, is actually to start setting some keyframes to get this animation working. Before I do that, I'll just have a look through my actual camera view and just check that there we go, that's all coming onto screen nicely. I'm happy with that. That looks good.